Welcome along to the Other Races web preview of the 2013 Cheltenham Festival. We're turning our attentions now to day number three and the Ryanair chase to guide us through the contenders. I have alongside me a winner of 14 races at the Cheltenham Festival in Mick Fitzgerald. And Mick, you won this race a few years ago on one of my favourite old horses. Yeah, Fawn Martin. It was, a, it was a real crowning day for him as well. He'd finished second in the race the previous year to this, that and t'other. And I thought his chance might have gone but not a bit of it. He just loved Cheltenham and he loved that two mile five trip. And when you've got a horse who, who does like it round Cheltenham, it's a real winner for them. And you know, a lot of people have poo pooed this race and said, oh, it's a poor man's relation to a champion chase or a gold cup. But I don't think so. I think you can get a horse who's a real specialist round Cheltenham at this trip. And Farm Mart was one of those. And you could have set your clock <laughs> for him going round that two mile five there. But in terms of this race, you, you say that people have knocked it, which they have done. But in terms of a jockey, you'd, I'm sure you'd rather take a win any day in a Ryanair than, say, be second in a Queen Mother. Well, if I rode 14 Ryanair chase winners in my career, it's still 14 Cheltenham Festival winners. And for me, that counts more than anything. Because every jockey in that weighing room wants to ride a winner at that festival. If it's a Ryanair, if it's a Gold Cup, if it's a Champion Chase, they're all top class races. Well, let's try and find you the winner then of this year's Ryanair Chase and have a look at the best prices. Q card is at four to one. First Lieutenant at five to one. Sides of Europe at six to one. Riverside Theatre, who has won this race previously, eight to one. Champion Court at tens. Menorah at 12s. Albertus running another previous winner at 20 to 1. Finian's Rainbow at 20. Four non stop at 20. And Grand Crew at 25. But I guess we've got many of these horses making the betting. We're not sure where they're going to run yet. But favourite and still, it's 50 50 for the race. He could go for the Queen Mother, but he could go over the longer trip. And I think it's key that if we look back at this run last time out as well, that all this season has been over longer distances. Yeah, and. I this was a very good performance for me. A lot of people said, oh, Captain Chris, was, he was travelling just as well as him when he made a bad mistake at the second last. I disagree. I think Captain Chris made the mistake because he, he didn't have as much petrol in the tank as Q-Card. I think Q-Card is a very worthy winner. And I think, you know, let's make no bones about it. This horse finished seven lengths behind Sprinter Sacra in the Arca last year. 22 lengths back to Menorah. That tells you how well this horse ran at Cheltenham last year. He likes to track. He's got winning form in the bumper there. He's been there previously over fences and excelled. And for me, I think this horse is a very worthy favourite. And is he better over two and a half than two miles these days? I, th I think so. I think he's the sort of horse that you've got to ride him over two and a half the same way as you'd ride him over two. Just ride him aggressively because that's what this horse loves. He loves being allowed to bowl along and ride him and attack those obstacles. And I think if Joe Tizard does that on him, It'd be very hard to get by. And it would be terrific to see the Tizard family in there as a unit winning a, a festival championship race. Yeah, it would be. You know, I rode a few winners for them as a jockey. And a nicer family you would not meet. And they're, they're a shrewd operation as well. Make no bones about it. They live, might live down in Dorset and they may be farmers. But to, trust me, this is no farming operation. It's a very professionally run outfit. And it would be great for them if they can have yet another Cheltenham Festival winner. Well, we talk about uh, Q Carlton, what's his best distance? What about size in Europe? He's been over two miles, he's been tried over two and a half. We can see him here in winning form in the Tide Cottage last time out, Mick. And for all that he is a two miler, he's unbeaten, I think four from four, over two and a half miles. Yeah, and it'll be an interesting decision for Henry de Bromhead to make. He has excelled himself with this horse because this horse is unbeaten since he got very narrowly beaten in last year's champion chase. And I. Uh, with Sprinter Sacra being such a short price favourite for the champion chase, they may want to go down this route and feel they've got a winning chance. And Alan Allen Potts, they put a lot of money into this game and they want to have winners on the big days. And this will be a big day for this horse if he lines up here because he'll either be joint favourite or favourite in the race. But in terms of his stamina, I think that's quite a shoot over two and a half miles. And I think even looking back, he finished second to Koto Star at Down Royal over three miles. Yeah, and he got, he got very narrowly run out of it by Quito Della Rock, didn't he? Wasn't that at Down Royal as he well? He was, yeah. That yeah. was in bad ground where he basically set sail for home too far out, got involved in a battle that day. And for me, I have no worries about the trip for this horse. If he lines up in this, he's a player. Well, connection still undecided as to his target. Another horse with a target undecided is First Lieutenant. We can see him here uh, finishing close up at uh, Leopardstown over Christmas. He was second to Tidal Bay in the Lexus. Connections, though, Mick, thinking either Gold Cup or Ryanair. Oh, for me, I hope this horse runs in a Ryanair. 
His form at the Cheltenham Festival is rock solid. He beat Rock on Ruby in the Neptune, and you had some very good horses like Oscar as well behind. This is a smart horse, and I think ridden aggressively. He's a flamboyant jumper. You watched him in the Hennessy when he got beaten by Bobsworth. This horse led the field for a long way and got run out of it close home. And I'm not so sure that this horse is an out-and-out -out stare. I think over that 2-5 trip at Cheltenham, he flew up the hill that day when he beat Rock on Ruby and, and mugged him on the line. And I think ridden the same way, he might just find himself a little bit outpaced in the Ryanair, but he'll be rattling home. And sometimes the ones that rattle home are the ones who get it done. And you look at him there in the Lexus, you've got Tidal Bay on the far side, you had on this side Sir Deshaun, both mm -hmm. finishing stronger than him. Mouse Morris seems to be indicating the, the gold cup at his preference, but the owners have also got Sir Deshaun there. Yeah, they have, and Davy Russell as well, he did a great feature with Matt Chapman. And, you know, I think he, I definitely got the impression he was edging more towards Ryanair with this horse. And, you know, if you're a, a stable jockey, as he is to Gigginstown, you want to have two throws at a dice to win big festival races and he's got them with Sir Deschamps and this fella in the right now. He's been to Cheltenham Festival twice before and has got a tremendous record there. Well, another horse has been to Cheltenham before and been a winner is Riverside Theatre, trained by Nicky Henderson, but he's been a little bit disappointing this year, Mick, and I think being treated since he ran in the King George. Yeah, they found that he's got ulcers this horse and they were worried because when he went out to grass and he goes back to Brian Gleeson's place in Ireland, and he put on an awful lot of weight and he looked amazing when he came back over. But throughout the season, his weight just dropped off him for no apparent reason because the horse was eating okay. And then they, they had a look at him and found this problem. They treated it. And Nicky, when you ask him about this horse, he's got a real little glint in his eye because he thinks he's found a key to this fellow. But would it be a concern a horse has had just one start and finished sixth in a King George all season going into a, a championship race? It, it would be under normal circumstances, but because he's had this problem and they've treated it, it gives you a little bit more optimism if you're a, if you're a Riverside Theatre fan. Well, Champion Court went to the festival last year and finished second to Sir de Champ. So far this season, things probably haven't gone his way, but I thought his run, I know he gets beaten here, Mick, at long odds on, I think four to nine turned over um, on his, well, this is him getting beaten in the handicap, but he's been turned over since uh, four to nine, but his run in the King George was stellar, attacking from the front over three miles. Yeah, it was, and he, he just blatantly didn't stay in the King George. And, you know, I, I think he's a smart horse, but I think he's a nearly horse. And it'll be a great day for Martin Keithley if this horse wins a Ryanair at the festival because that's what all trainers want. They want to be on that winner's board there. Uh, but I think he's booked for a place. And last year when he was second to Soda Champ in the Juice, and he looked as though he might go on and progress this year, but he, I don't think he has really. No, I, I think he's a pretty good benchmark, but I just think he always seems to find one too good for him. I hope that's not the case this year, but at the, at the moment from what I've seen, I think it is. Well, let's take one more look at the prices for this year's Ryanair Chase. And we didn't touch on Mickey, he's 20 to 1, but Albertus Rudder, who I think had a, a gallop at Kempton a few days ago to get him ready for his return to the festival. He's been a, he's been a great servant to John, Joe O'Neill and Trevor Hemmings. And if he, he raised the roof, this horse worried to win, but it, isn't it amazing? How the mighty have fallen. Grand crew down there at 25 to 1. One of the bankers of last year's festival. And it just goes to show you, a year is a long time in racing. As well, Finian's Rainbow, winner of an arc, uh, of a Queen Mother last still year, 20 to 1 as still well. Still rated 173. You know, you, these are the sort of horses that if they win at the festival, you look back and say, well, why didn't, we, why didn't I notice that one? But it is, you know, Menorah is another one. He's been, he's run okay this year, but he was trounced in the Arkle. And I think, you know, for me, I think one of the top five in the betting here will win this race. And if we assume that this is going to be the lineup of the field, of those top five of the betting, which one comes up the hill first? Uh, I think it'll be a, a, a real battle. And I think for me, it's between Q Card and First Lieutenant. I know they're first and second favourites, but I think they're two very smart horses who've been to Cheltenham and worn the T shirt with pride. So, you know, I think it'll be one of those two.